Uh, it's good to see you here on this live stream that we're doing this Sunday afternoon before the Super Bowl. Uh, it's the Rams against the Bengals. If you have a preference, I'm, I'm doing uh, this one right here. I'm just going to type it in. There go, Bengals. And we are going to take a look at side B of the Commodore or the Mega 65 um, included SD card that's going to come with the Mega 65. This is an entire list of Commodore 64 software that is going to come with the Mega 65. A lovely accountant for my birthday last week, which by the way, thank you to uh, those of you who sent me out birthday greetings. I appreciate that. Gave me this. She's actually listening to me talk about this retro stuff. She snuck down to my retro library to see what books I had and did not have. And she found this one on Amazon. And I'm, I'm actually pretty uh, stoked about this. This is Mastering the Commodore 64. And it's really relevant today because we're going to be looking at C64 mode on the Mega 65. But this book claims to uh, allow me to master the Commodore 64. So if we look in here, we can see some of the contents, you know, the basic language, color. We have animation, how to create animation in basic, music and sound synthesis, uh, programmable characters. We have sprites, highlight or high resolution graphics. That should be kind of interesting. Uh, other computers basic. So if you're converting from, say, a ZX Spectrum or a Timex Sinclair, as they were known in the United States, you'll have that. We'll have a section on peripherals, speeding up and improving your basic programs. And then I am actually looking forward to this. Uh, I wanted to do some more. I, I really need to, I never learned machine language growing up, even with my VIC. I kind of dabbled with it. And of course, the VIC-20 didn't have a machine language monitor. So I really want to dive into some machine language this year and try and work with that. So here's the machine language section, all the same types of things we saw, programmable characters and machine code, sprites in machine code, Commodore 64 architecture, uh, similarities between basic and machine code programs in section three, the appendices. This is one of those books that might really be nice on a Kindle, but the paper's really thin, but it's fine. It's good. And it's one of those things I can mark up and use, but you can see even here talking about how to work with sprites could be kind of interesting. I'm kind of looking at it uh, and thinking there might be some interest here. And I might even pull some of this to a future live stream. We may go through some of the examples. Thanks to the lovely accountant for this book. I do really think I'm going to have a blast with it. And talking about books, I just want to let you know, uh, some of you saw my tweet. I have finished this. Now this uh, Back Into the Storm by Bill Hurd is his time at Commodore. I think it's 81 to 85 or something like that, 82, right around there. Um, I would recommend this book. It's an interesting read. I would say, and I'm going to say this here, that Bill Hurd is probably more interesting than the book. He seems like a very interesting individual. Uh, he admittedly gets himself in trouble regularly. This really is just a stream of consciousness. It kind of goes through the years and he brings these stories back out as he goes through them. Again, a recommended read. I will put uh, links to both of these books somewhere, probably in a companion blog post, or maybe I'll do a buy me a coffee post and put those in there so that you have that. Uh, Michael Whip says, I second, uh, second the recommendation of the book, more fun stories versus a deep info. Dive. Yeah, there's not a lot of depth to any of the stories, but it is fun, but very enjoyable and sounds like Bill speaks. Yes, if you watch uh, Bill heard on any of his videos, especially, I don't know if any of you have tried to watch his live streams. He partners up with, and I can't remember the general, gentleman's name, I, I, I apologize, but they get in deep in some things. Matt Meyer says, I heard Commodore had employees actually sleeping in their offices. Some employees never <laughs> left the building. Uh, and actually, Bill talks about sleeping under his desk in the book. So you definitely want to check that out, Matt, if you've not read that. Uh, Sandcat says, new equipment, picture and sound is great. Hey, thanks. I, I, I do have some. Hey, Mitzlov, thank you so much. Really appreciate your support, Mitzlov. For those of you that don't know, just hit the little thank you button down there and got this really cool super chat. So thank you for that, Miss Loff, as always. Oh, it's not for me. It's for the lovely accountant. Bless your heart. I will share with her for uh, Valentine's Eve because this is Valentine's Eve. Uh, back to this question right here. New equipment, picture, and sound is great. I have invested some of the money that you, the supporters and the producers, have sent my way into equipment to make this better. Let's go back to here. So this is what we're here for. Let's take a look at some uh, some of the games uh, and demos that come on the Mega 65. Now, before we do that, 
let me show you if you are a dev kit owner, and I know there's at least one out there. If you go to this GitHub page, go to Mega 65 Release Prep, these are all the files that you're going to find on the SD card when the Mega 65 is released. Uh, but this is the SD card. These are all the files. Now, some of these are the files that are required for the Mega 65 to operate. And then some of them are the things that you would have and use just to have fun, like the Mega 65.d81, which it looks like they just added a new game called Zombie Detective to the menu. And what we're going to do today, though, is we're going to take a look at C64.d81. What I've done then is these are all of the games and or demos that are going to run in C64 mode on the Mega 65. So we're just gonna kind of work through. We obviously can't get through all of these. We did take a look at a couple of these during the uh, live stream for um, Christmas Eve. If you've not seen that live stream, that live stream is available. You can go see that. Uh, but we took a look at the side, what I like to call side one of the SD card or that Mega 65. D81 that we just looked at earlier. This is what we like to call side B, which are all the C64 things. So we'll run through these. Now to make this a little bit easier, here's what I've done. And this is where working with the Mega gets a little tricky, but I'm gonna show you something now. So I'm gonna be turning this off and I'm gonna show you a feature here. I'm going to turn off my Mega 65. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and I'm gonna turn it on. But I'm gonna go into the configure. And now one of the things you can do is you can set the, def this is the Mega 65 configuration you can set what's the default disk image. So if I scroll over here, you can see down here, instead of this normally being the Mega65.d81, I have changed it to C64.d81. That way, every time the Mega65 boots or resets, when it pops up, it's going to uh, come to that particular disk image instead of the default. Oh, there's Deft. Hey, Deft, good evening. Uh, let me go ahead and just reboot and I'll show you what that means. So normally it would boot to the Mega 65 uh, disk image, but now if I just type directory, oh, and I have this really nice thing, DIRW. This is something that you're gonna wanna use. Check out what happens. Now that's not your normal C64 listing, is it? Now here's the problem. This is the C64 side. We've gotta be in C64 mode. So before we can use this software. So, you know, a couple of ways I can do this. Uh, I have set it up as the default, but that's still not where I wanna go. So what I have done to make this even easier is I'm gonna hold the restore button down for a few seconds and let up on it. And then I've created in the freezer, I've created this slot right here. In slot one, you can see, you'll see I have an internal drive set to C64.d81. Now watch what happens when I load, and I'm gonna hit F3 to load. For those of you not familiar with the Mega 65, you're gonna love this. And it boots into C64 mode or loads C64 mode, but then automatically loads, as you can see at that first line right here, it automatically loads the directory. So now all I have to do after I restore is type list, and you'll see the listing of all that software shows up. So that's just gonna make it a little bit easier. And now what we'll do is we'll just work through a few of these uh, demos and see what we have. So I think what we're going to, oh, and by the way, I do have my joystick here in case we, we need the joystick. This is, again, is the Hyperkin that fits perfectly with the Mega 65. And again, I have uh, links to this thing everywhere on my webpage. Just uh, go to the webpage and search for Hyperkin. You can find that. It is awesome. Okay, let's go up here and let's start with the first one. Hang in there. Here we go. And I think we're running at 40 megahertz right now. So here is our demo. Uh, let me see if we've got any sound. Hold on. I'm hearing sound. We'll go ahead and turn sound up just a little bit for you. Let's see, we're on number three. There we go. And so this is uh, a demo which looks pretty nice, doesn't it? This is pretty cool. You've got uh, the space scene up here. You've got some guy, what is he doing? Is he hitting a drum? What is that? What's going on down there with that guy? Uh, Retro Combs, Def says, do you have the latest SD or the latest SID update bitstream by chance? I have, uh, Def, the latest um, bitstream I have installed is February 6th because I remember updating it on my birthday. I did not update it today. So let us know what we should be hearing. Should it be stereo or what should be going on too? Def says it's, it's like 10 or more minutes. So this thing would just keep going on and on. 
Def says it's all C64 mono SID stuff and your bitstream is good. Excellent, thank you, I appreciate that. Now normally I have to reboot and I have to load the disk and do all that business, but I'm gonna hit restore. I'm gonna come back up to this freezer slot right here. I'm going to load it and look what happens. So we're back to where we were. So now we can just list again and you see our entire list and we can start over. And Michael says, the music is a cover of the first part of Jeff Wayne's musical version of the War of the Worlds concept album, Rock Opera. Trap says, starts around three minutes and then stuff happens. Well, gosh, I guess I should let it run just a little bit longer, but hey, that will give you all an option uh, or an opportunity to load that when you receive your Mega 65. Or don't forget, for those of you that don't know, there is an a uh, Mega 65 emulator for your PC, Mac, or Linux box. It is XEMU and it's the X Mega 65. I do have a link and I have full directions on a blog post that I've done at retrocombs.com or stephencombs.com and you can load that and you can load this and play all these demos as well. So remember, you can still do this even without a Mega 65. And then finally, uh, Bjarki, uh, I bet I've messed that one up. Is there any plans to make a, C60, a C128 on the Mega 65? There are cores being in, uh, developed, a C64 core, and there's also uh, a, a cooperation with the Mr. community to bring some of those cores over. Defta says, nobody working on the 128, but the C64 core and possibly around the corner. Yes, we are going to load shades and see what that's all about. Let me go ahead and hit run. Here we go, and while we're doing that, it says, the question is who needs a 128 core if everyone just uses, <laughs> I know. Well, I love, oh, by the way, I uh, just so you all know, since you brought it up, since you're talking about it, look what's sitting next to me. I mean, you, you're, you just brought it up. This was, uh, I went from a Commodore VIC-20 to this computer, well, not this particular one, but to the C128. I made that mistake as a lot of people did and, and didn't keep it, but uh, this is beautiful. It's been recapped and everything. It's a gorgeous shape. Uh, it's just wonderful, and we'll be doing some more things on the C128. By the way, for those of you who watched my live stream where I converted a C128 program, not a C64 program, but a C128 program to the Mega 65, I did get that completed. I'm going to do either a live stream update about that so you can see the 128 version and the Mega 65 version or a video. I'm, I'm leaning more towards a video because I'd like to kind of go through side by side and how the basic is different between the C128 uh, Commodore, uh, was that uh, 128 was version seven, I think, and the Mega 65 is version 10. You know, we may have to do a part two for this because I don't know that we're gonna get to all of these right uh, today. Now the Airwolf music we have done, we are gonna load this one. This is Pick a Force DTK. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we get. All right, we got some graphics here. So we do have something on the screen. Do we have sound? Okay, so we'll let this one go for just a few minutes. And while we're doing that, we'll catch up on chat. So Michael says, some C64 mode software supports some speed increases running on C128, and I believe the Mega already supports that part. As a matter of fact, if I wanna change the speed, I can simply go here, and you can see that we can hit F, and we can modify the speed at which the software is running. So I'm gonna go back to 40 right here. And so that is on in C64 mode. We're, we're actually bumping that up. Let's go back and resume that, and hopefully it didn't mess it up too much. And you can see it's a pretty cool demo, looking pretty good right there. So the next one we're gonna do is TRSI Natura Morta, I believe. And you'll notice uh, the thing I really like about this is these things load fast. So far, so good. What do we have on this one? Let's see, any sound? Uh, let's see if my SID player works. Oh, here we go. Okay, let's give it a second to go. Um, Dave wants to know, is there a way to combine a 6510 and Xilog Z80 cores into one FPGA? Oh, so that we can get uh, CPM mode. That's interesting, uh, David. So thanks for joining us, David. You've been uh, through many live streams with me. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. And what do we have in the sound? Let me turn this up a little bit for us. Def says, give it a moment. <laughs> See, I can't talk with this in. Def says, give it a moment. If you've ever tried to talk and hear yourself,
yourself talk and there's a half second delay, you can't do it. But Deft has promised us, promised us great things. So let's go. This is already, this looked really great. I love the look of this. It's, I don't know. It's got this really cool color palette. This is really nice. Uh, Deft also says yes to the Zylock question, which is great. Uh, Kraken Soundscapes. Kraken Soundscape says, Piku G-Force demo. Um, oh, it moved on me. Hold on. Uh, released by Decadence in 2003, released at uh, Simulation Simulatio 2. Very cool. Uh, see, this is why you all need to be in the chat because I wouldn't know these things, but I'm learning these things, which is great. Uh, let's see. Michael says absolutely the Mega 65 FPGA core already contains several chips, including the CPU, big fits, etc. Yes, it does. Uh, I am going to be here till the video stream ends. Well, thank you, David. Appreciate it. Good to, again, good to have you here. I think we've had enough of this one. Let's go ahead and uh, bounce into the next one. So again, I'm going to tap and hold that restore button for about two seconds. I don't know the quicker way to do this. Uh, Deft, if you have, or anybody else who has a Mega 65 Dev Kit, if you could think of a quicker way to move between these programs. This, this um, particular one, unlike the other one, didn't have its own menu. Now, maybe that'll change, but it didn't have its own really cool menu for all the different games. But this seems to be the fastest way I knew to kind of work through these. Let's go to C64 Fourier here and see what we have. Oh, just heard that. Sorry. There we go. Let me get rid of that for you. There we go. All right, perfect. Uh, let's see, let me get, while we're watching this one, let me get caught up on the chat a little bit. Um, let's see, <laughs> Dev said it's nice watching you run the demos. Probably it's nice watching me run the demos because you don't have to run the demos, right Dev? Uh, so good, to, good, happy to do it though. I, I, I'm having a blast because I, I did not run any of these in advance, so all these are a surprise as well. The only ones I uh, ran in advance were the ones I ran during the Christmas Eve live stream, but other than that, I've not done that. Uh, yeah, I know. Both of you there, I got that. So apologies, we got that fixed. Um, no, it's fine except for the Sid Poo. We shall reset in the next freezer version. Okay, perfect. And then uh, Jamie gives a thumbs up there. So there's that one. Yeah, it is, uh, it is kind of fun watching, uh, going through these demos. Let's go ahead. Let's move quickly now. Yeah. All right, here's one for us. What is this one? Is this one in stereo? Do we have two SIDs going on here, Deft? Do we have both? Both? Yeah, this sounds like this one's in stereo. That's really nice. I like that one. Okay. Oh, here's nothing. Hey, should we load nothing? This is for nothing. Nothing for nothing. Leaves nothing. It's a good song. So I'm going to load nothing. <laughs> just sounds wrong, doesn't it? I'm loading nothing. You want something? I got nothing. You may want something, but this is nothing. Bad joke, I know. All right, let's see what nothing is. Oh, oh, that was cool. Fit and Friends present at Vamala Party 2017. So this is a 27 thing. Nothing but Petski. Oh, this is cute. So that's Petski. That is hilarious. And as you know... We keep our promises. There is nothing else here than a pet, a jolly cat skiing. Well, that is so much fun. So there you go. There's nothing but pet ski. So the puns for this whole section were just totally off the charts. All right. So that one's fun. All right. Let's pull this one out here. I, I really appreciate that they said that there's nothing else here. This is Sub TV Orange. This is a 2019. This might be pretty impressive. Hey, this one's taking a little bit of time to load too. Could be impressive. Let's see what we get here. I already like it. Thought you had seen it all. <laughs> After the pet ski, I thought I had seen it all. You are correct. 
Uh, bitmap 6502 Petski, but not this. I'm intrigued. Orange, let's see. Presents. Ah, check that out. Okay, well, let's give this a second. I'll get caught up on chat here. Um, somehow music not there. Uh, oh, on the last one, Deft, yeah, I just noticed uh, on the pet ski, I didn't have the music on. Maybe we'll pop back in real quick. It, yeah, it wasn't freeze related. It was user error, right? Uh, I think, yeah, exactly. So you all are you all are tracking with me. Games are on top of the disc above the separator. Oh, good to know. So all the games are above the separator. So all I'm doing is showing you demos. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do then. But let me go ahead and pull up Petski again here. Um, since there was sound, I hate for you to leave without getting the full experience of nothing. You need to know what nothing sounds like. <laughs> it just gets, it gets worse. I'm sorry, everybody. All right, let's see what we have. That's not bad. It's uh, it's 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 pretty basic, but at least now you know what. Again, nothing sounds like you've got it. So uh, thank you for letting me know that I made that mistake. Please turn up the volume. I I have man, it is cranked at this point. Hold on. You, you know what? I can hold on. There we go. I turned it up a little bit on my capture device too. There we go. Now I can manage the sound. So again, through this uh, live stream today, I'm actually doing some tweaking. So thank you all for having patience with me. If you want me to have another live stream where we dig into some of these other ones, please leave your comments below. Uh, we are going to uh, kind of go out though with Shadow Switcher, which we understand is a game. So what I heard, Def said everything above the line right here, all these, these are games and everything below is demo. So that's good to know. I uh, probably could have figured that out if I spent time, but Deft was here to save us. So that's awesome. And this one is taking a little bit of time to load. Okay, so let's pop down here and let's run and see what this game looks like. Dr. Woro Industries presents Shadow Switcher, play the game, watch. Okay, now this is, uh, I'm gonna show you guys this. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is nice. So right now, uh, the joystick appears not to be working. Now I could unplug it and plug it in, but what we can do with the switch, uh, with the freezer, which I, I just love this. This is one of my favorite fi features actually, is I can hit J and I can swap to the other joystick. I can hit F3 to resume and now I can move through. So here's a demo. Let's watch the demo because I'm sure the demo will be better than me playing. And while the demo's playing, you can take a look at that and I will take a look at the chat. Uh, Shadow Switcher is great. Good, excellent. Glad uh, that's good. I'm a uh, matter of fact. I do need to play this. Uh, I love that this includes a demo though, because of so many games you're trying to figure out what you need to do. And at least if you sit here and watch, you can kind of figure out what the game is. So that is pretty nice. So that is Shadow Switcher. You know what? I I, I want to do one more. We are going to run Spikes before we get out of here. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Coding Mega Style. Press Fire. This is very interesting. Again. Again, got my Hyperkin joystick. Uh, again, love this joystick. Again, nine pin den, just plugs right in, which is good. And oh, what in the world was that? So that was one. Oh, oh, I got the two. Hey, I got the two that time. I got this, oh, three. Okay, so I got the three, so that's good. So hey, that, that's kind of a nice game. I like that plays really well too, but it is kind of a flappy bird. So what you do is you keep yourself hovering and moving so that you don't hit the spikes either at the top or the bottom, which seems like they're there all the time, the ones on the right. And I wanna thank all the folks who joined me in chat today. I also wanna thank Miss Law for sending me a nice little thanks down there. I uh, really appreciate him doing that. Uh, but just a blast. And again, I really enjoy these, not because I get to sit here and play the games, but I enjoy it for the conversation. You all are super. And hey, getting excited. This is February in March. Keeping those fingers crossed, this thing may end up at our door. And again, I do plan when it arrives for me, we will unbox it together. Uh, I will not unbox it in, in, until I'm live. So I will resist the temptation so that each of you 
uh, can kind of share that a moment with me. We'll set it up, we'll use it, we'll turn it on so you get to see exactly what it looks like. Hopefully Deft will be here for that too in case I run into issues. I don't suspect I will since I have the dev kit, uh, but I, uh, it's just gonna be a blast. It's gonna be like Christmas, but it's going to be Easter. So with that, I will just say, as I always do, Retro Combs out.